You guys keep asking, what are the hottest sectors to invest in? Once again, tech, healthcare, biotech. I want to give you guys a tip during a recession. Whatever industry caused the, the pullback or the drop or is greatest affected by it, those are the industries that you should look into. So we have a healthcare crisis. So now we have to look at healthcare companies and the health sector that can help. So Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, et cetera. There's a few others that you guys can look into. Um, also, one that I've talked about before, for those of you that work in, in the hospital field, Stryker is amazing. We've been in that one for a while. But please write this down. So if we ever get into a student loan crisis, we need to look at the companies that could bail us out. And once that bubble pops, I'll show you next week how to look at that curve to know when it, when it will pop. We have to look at the industries that will be affected. And if they get to a recession or rock bottom prices, we have to look to invest there because they're once in a lifetime opportunities. Last time it was banking and real estate. And that's why those companies went up. We are in a health crisis right now. So for my athletes and entertainers who've been chiming in and who like, yo, don't put my business out there, but King, I need some help. This plan is for you. <laughs> so when Drake got his deal in 2016, uh, this is what I would have done for him. Um, so number one, whenever you get a big chunk of money, put 33% of that money into whatever asset you like. You know, I'm partial to Apple. And since he got the deal with Apple in 2016, it would have been a good place to invest, right? So that average price he would have got in before the 9 one split would have been $93.20. But I would have put him right at 54,000 shares. Um, three years later, he would have been up 104%. And it's the model you can use for yourself too. And then when we had that vicious drop in April, I would have had him put two million more in. So tell me what the percentage is of the original amount that he invested. So I want you to get 33% at first. And then I want you to add. So anytime we have another recession, any vicious pullback, and some of you are like, how do I know when a market drop? Whenever they're talking about investing on ESPN, you know things are really bad, right? And when everybody's in a barbershop talking about it, that's when the market has hit its lowest peak, uh, lowest price. So now once you add that, the average price would have been 44.65. He would have had 185,000 shares. He would be up 457%, which would have put him right at 28 million. Here's the crazy part. That would have been... 61% of what he made in 2020. Now, Drake's not hurting. He's been killing since so far gone. But for those of you that come into a windfall of money, you have to put that money into better companies than you. So for my business owners, athletes, entrepreneurs, you have to ask yourself, are you better than Elon? Are you better than Tim Cook? Are you better than the CEO of Google? If not, tie your money to them and you, the generational wealth that we want to talk about um, frequently and have will be there in those. Ian, Ian, do you mind repeating that? Cause your mic, your mic went out for a little bit during that, during that Drake segment. Dang, okay, let's run it back for the boy. Uh, <laughs> step one, anytime you get a bag or get any windfall, you wanna put 33% of your money into a company that you love, okay? You wanna hold it for at least four years. So in this example, after three years, he would have been up 104%. I want you to go through the tech stocks that you love. Go to macrotrends.net and look every four years, how much is that stock up on average? If the company has been around for 20 years, you have enough data to know on average that over a four to five year period, most tech stocks are gonna go up to 100 to 220%. Anytime we have a recession, I want you to take pretty much a third of that and put more money back in and then let the price run because the same thing that happened in 2020 happened in 2008. Now, for those of us who missed out, like I did, because I was afraid and didn't listen, I made sure in this recession that I took advantage of it. So when we have our next one in probably 2027, I want you guys to be prepared. So if you invest in any tech, you should expect over five to seven year period to be up about 500%. And like I said, if you do that, um, in this case, that will put him at like 61% of what he made in 2020. So tie your money to entrepreneurs that are better than you. And the reason why I bring this up, this is a blueprint for freedom for all artists and creatives. I'm tired of seeing our talent fighting on Clubhouse and YouTube and IG. 
And the root of that issue is not enough money. I mean, we, we saw it with Button last year and the deal didn't go through with Spotify, but it's like, man, if some of that money would have been tied in to these same tech companies. And even what the thing that I loved about the collective movement of Reddit with GameStop, it shows the power if we come together and decide to invest in one company, we can move the market, but we can also have influence inside of those companies as well. So for my creatives and artists, I want you to stop solely being artists and looking at yourselves as an entity and invest in. So this is what, if you invest 10K a month in the market for your child for a two year period, this is what your returns will be. So screenshot this. And this is based off of a conservative return of seven to 12%, nothing crazy, no options, no trading, no futures. And for my business owners who've asked, how can I guarantee uh, riches for my family for a lifetime? A simple cu calculation, find an asset that will give you 12% a year. And for those of you that are cash flowing very well, because some of you have had your best year ever in 2020, but I don't want you going to Vegas and blowing all of your money. So put 10 grand in. And then if you do this over a period of time, this is what the return will be off a of conservative investment. So the next big frontier that I think that we will have to face on a commodity side is water. Michael Burry talked about this at the end of the big short, but I want to give you the ETF before um, anyone else. CGW is a ticker for the S&P Global Water ETF. Now, for those of you in three weeks who be like, hey, man, uh, I got this ETF. <laughs> Y'all got it here first, right? But as companies have ruined some of our natural resources, water is becoming more scarce and water features will become more popular over the next four or five years. I want you to be prepared. This too is at a high, so I want you to be careful. It's not the time to buy. If there's ever a, a drop, we'll say it here on the show, but please write this down. C G W It's one of the most important resources that we have on our planet. Rashad, Troy and I get probably a thousand messages a month about what to invest in. So I'm gonna give you the top Vanguard ETFs real quick. If you wanna invest in a total market, VTI is the way to go. If you are looking for value for my traditional investors, a VTW is a ticker, please screenshot this. If you're looking for growth, VUG. And if you think the rotation is coming, a small cap is gonna take over, you can look at VB. So these are the main four that you can look at to invest in through Vanguard. Now, last week I told you about the type of portfolios that you can invest in, but I want to give you four examples. So it takes all the mystery out of it. So the first one you have super safe. If you don't want to lose any money and you came into a bunch of money, you're like, hey, I don't want to risk anything. It's great that you guys love tech, but I, I want security. This is the one for you. Look at the ticker IEF and you would do 100% of the capital here. So here are the positives, virtually no losses. It only went down 2% last year. So when the world was on fire and everyone was crying about losses, you only lost a little bit. Over the last 10 years, it only dropped 7.6% and that was in 2013. The bad part is it is slow as hell and the returns are small. So you're looking at 4.4% growth per year, but this is good for people that are older. So if you're 50, 60, 70, and you want safety, you don't want to gamble, don't want a bunch of drawdown, this is the one for you. Number two, high yield bonds. So you would do a fourth of each of HYG, AMB, SPLB, and JN, JNK. The positive is it only dropped 11% last year, which is amazing. It averages about 6% per year. And the negative is because it's a bond, it's a little bit slower and not the best if you want growth. Now this is a classic 80-20 that Rashad was talking about last, um, last week, right? So... The upside is you get great growth. You're gonna average about 11.86 per year and the total return over 10 years is 111%, which is amazing. The negatives is it's super aggressive. In 2003, it dropped 31%. In 2009, it dropped 41%. And in 2020, it dropped 16%. So anytime we have an aggressive drop, if you have this mix, your account is gonna get hammered. But if you stay in for that five or 10 year period, like we talked about, you'll be okay. And this is for those of you who want crazy growth, all tech. So in this example, I use the example of Apple, Microsoft, 
Amazon and AMD. So if you started with 10 grand and held it for 10 years, it grew to 131,000 over a 10 year period. Amazing. The negatives are down 25% in 2018 and you have no downside protection. But those are the four main portfolios that you can do. You can do super safe, you can do mildly safe, you can do a little bit aggressive and then you can do what I call like boss to the wall. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> A mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop.